I am such an idiot. So earlier today, two um, of the lambs kept getting out and wandering around and I've put them back in the completely wrong pens and I only realised, only realised it's now nine o'clock at night and I watched my own video on the telly and I went, I've just slammed that sheep and it came out with white on its face and the lamb that I kept putting back in here was dark. I put them back with the wrong bloody sheep. Oh my God, and now look at them both stood sucking. God, I'm such an idiot. No wonder they kept walking off and finding their way out because it was wrong money. Oh, there's a sheep lambing. Can you see her? Oof, oof. Oh, she's going to be a pleasant one to lamb, isn't she? Look at that little uh, belter there. This is a very tiny sheep with a single lamb. So a major treacle addict, as you can tell by her face. So I'll just go and get some gloves. Um, I did put a bit about gloves in the video and then I totally, I took it out because it was getting a bit long. So historically, and I just mean two years ago, <laughs> I love saying that, I didn't wear gloves. I found that I couldn't really feel what I was doing. Um, when I was running around, found a bit of a pain in the ass to go and find them. Um, yeah, I just, I just didn't bother, to be honest. Anywho, um, first year when I lambed 32 sheep, I was totally fine. Second year, when we doubled the amount of sheep, I was not totally fine. Um, I gave myself iodine burns on my skin and when I bent my hands all my skin was cracking oh, it, honestly it was it was really really horrible so I then went on a bit of a, a, a lambing talk and it was talking about the importance of wearing gloves for the sheep and then there was also a local girl around here um, who got sepsis over lambing time now I don't I didn't know them personally and I don't know if it was linked properly do you know what I mean, with the actual sheep. But needless to say, um, it made everyone think a little bit more and it is obviously the right thing to do. And then as well, I'm putting myself on the internet and I think to be responsible with the amount of people that are seeing what I'm doing, obviously it's the right thing to do. So I have to save myself and because, you know, it is sensible, I have been wearing gloves every time. That was full of drama, full of drama. So when you're driving it, right, and you're on the motorway, it it won't let you go over the white lines. Like the steering wheel pulls. It's really bizarre. It's freaky as hell. Like I can't quite um, gel with it. It's too clever for me, but it's very fast. They give your car a wash mm -hmm. and then the vacuum it. So did I want a complimentary um, vacuum and wash of the car? Roy's looking at me. I said, good luck with that. <laughs> That's fast. That's a nice car, that. Remember the other day 
when I was at Kirby Thor Philly and that Zerion went past on the wagon. Um, well, it was going to make you be like steady girls, Ricky be spring uh, open evening or whatever they call it. Anyway, um, when Tom Barker was here the other day, we said to Rufus, he had a toy Zerion on the table and we were like, oh, we'll take you to see a real one of them. So we're going to land down to Ricky B's tonight um, and have a bit of a nosy at the Zerion with Ruth. But um, I won't post it in tonight's video, I'll post it in tomorrow's because otherwise it'd be on far too late. So I'm just walking around Lambing Shed again, making sure everyone's okay. We have 100% run out of pens. Um, I didn't think we'd need any more. Evidently, we do need more. We need more now. Um, show you, because I can. Um, are you ready? This is why we've put the, um, you know those little blockers I was talking about that we got put on the other day. Are you looking, it's closing really slowly. It's just an, all they were was like a non-return thing to stop the oil going back into the machine. But if you don't have one on, which we haven't put it on this yet, this is what happens. Obviously it'd be worse if it was doing it the other way because you'd be driving down the yard and like straw be falling out of your grab and stuff. But it's not that bad. But yeah, we'll stick one on everything we've got anyway, just so it stops that happening. I've just put lime everywhere. Hence why I've got a mask on because, oh my God, that stuff is toxic. Wow. Like you feel like you've got flu if you breathe a lung full of that in. So I'm just going to go over, stick some straw in, straw the sheep out, make sure they're all nice and comfy. Um, figure out something, some way of making some more pens because literally run out, like they're popping out everywhere. Um, yeah, everything, to be honest, everything's going well. T touch, there's no wood, touch wood, touch wood. There's lots of wood there. I'll go and touch that wood. Me and Roy are just heading down the field um, to light a bonfire. Um, we have two piles, both of them um, were hedges, to be honest, that we were doing. Do I want to just try and get through here without? I think we're all right. I think we're all right. It's like bits of... Um, wire with bits of twigs and stuff that haven't burnt um, jobs that you never get round to doing so this is a giant pile of stuff that we pulled out of like the pond area there's just a, just like literally just some crappy old dead beat buckets in it and just wood this is just the fire that we're doing. It's just a massive big pile. Bag of old wool. It smells like burning hair. It's horrible. <laughs> it's all smouldering. Ugh. Really, we're trying to get this gone before the birds start nesting because there would be nothing worse than setting a fire and Always trying to kill me. So they were all just created years ago, and they're just little deep ponds. And in winter, they all fill up. I can show you now. I can get across. Clearing it out. If I can get across and show you, there's some little lovely like oak trees. You can see they're 20, 30 years old. Like they're not young, but they're just being strangled by willow all over. Loads are just. It's not even nice stuff, it's just, you know, just sprung up everywhere. It's called L-U-Z Beck. And it comes round here. Right through the middle of the farm. Um, we just ideally, all we want to be able to do is get through here with sheep. Be able to put the sheep through, that's all we really want. So we'll get um, some little concrete railway sleepers and put them over the top of the beck. And then the sheep can wander through. Thinks he's clever, look at him. I'm videoing him. He's not even funny. If he gets my Merlot stuck, it's gonna be hell on. Watch it, he'll tell me to stop videoing in a minute. Are you ready? <laughs> That's 
that's a sign to stop driving in here. Today is International Women's Day. Now, ordinarily, so let me. Ordinarily, I would completely ignore this, but um, I did feel a little bit of pride before. The AHDB tagged me in, um, well, Isaac tagged me in Facebook and Instagram, and then the AHDB Beef and Lamb tagged me in a Twitter post, and it just warmed me a little bit, sat on the tractor, driving around the field in the middle of Cumbria with Roy, that I was put alongside such amazing people. There was doctors, there was academics, there was Becca Wilson, like my ultimate fave girl. There was Charlie um, from Charlie Farms. If some of you watch a YouTube channel, if you don't go and have a look, very similar to mine, but she's way better looking. Um, Gina and me are on it. Like, honestly, it's amazing. Um, and I just, I was really excited just to be even put in the same bracket as these girls because you forget when you're just jobbing about on your own, doing your thing, that anyone's even looking at you. Hold on, this gate again. Be crappy um, gate and you end up going into a hedge, to be honest. Women's Day, you can't even stop us. <gasps> That's the noises we make when we go through gates. I just, yeah, I just wanted to tell you how proud I am just to be doing this. So, from uh, I'm just gonna go into town to the butchers and get some um hashtag British beef burgers from Low Halgo Butcher. That's where, yeah, that's where we get our, uh, uh, well, that's where we get our meat from when we don't do it ourselves, when we don't butcher our own. So yeah, I'm gonna go and do that. And then um, I'm gonna meet up with Tom Barker and we're gonna take that very, very snazzy courtesy car over there back to Lloyd's. And then um, we're gonna take Rufus to see the Zeri on. Roy's a loser and he doesn't wanna come. Just come to Ali's workshop to pick the bucket up and pay him for that. So I just got the flat trailer without the sides on and we'll just dump it on and go and see if it fits on the mellow. Just got home, picked the kids up. Anna's been to York. Did you have a good time? Yeah. She had a good time. She loved it. She made some friends from the local schools that went with them because where we are, the schools are all really small. Um, so they, go, they team together and they go three or four schools together which is kind of nice so she's made some friends that actually she knew when she was very very tiny because we went to play group with them Naze, very very snazzy look at that very snazzy big bucket Okay, so I'm gonna leave today's video there. Tomorrow we are having um, a stump ground out on the lane so that a wall can get built straight instead of with a, a, when, a windy, windy, windy around it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go and get some clothes on that aren't absolutely filthy. I'm gonna take this car back to Lloyd's in Carlisle. Um, and we're gonna, me, Tom and Alicia, cause uh, Rufus has come home from school and he's feeling a little bit sicky. Um, we're gonna head to Ricky B's and have a look at this um summer fair that they're doing thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow